Hello, hello. Oh, dear. <laughs> and so it begins. Okay, so today's going to be a little scuffed. I have to ask you guys to help me with the audio as we deal with this. Um, are you hearing double of me? Please let me know in the chat. You're going to discover very soon why this is all kind of a mess. <clears throat> I have a delay on myself in my head my earphones which is really disconcerting i think i'm probably just gonna end up turning off my own monitor let me see obs fun stuff okay you can still hear me this is cool i just can't hear me in my own head which is fine for today we'll deal with it we'll deal with it um yeah please let me know if i've got a double going because if, if that's the case then i have to scrap i gotta scrap this whole idea uh in the meantime while i'm waiting for for you guys to let me know um i'll tell you that we have some things going on at 343 right now you know it's black friday we are in the the corporate holiday season and so because of said season we are offering some pretty awesome deals on our uh classes um i'll double check exactly what um those are but i believe it's 45 percent off individual courses and then 25 percent off our bundles which the bundles are already uh on a, on a discounted price for being bundles um, so if you're ever looking to join us here at our physical location or try out some of our online classes, now would be a really awesome time to do that for sure. Um, we also got a giveaway going on, um, 200 bucks towards an Ableton uh, voucher. So you can uh, get some get some Ableton gear, maybe upgrade your actual DAW with that. Uh, so definitely, definitely apply for those. Looks like everyone's here, seen some familiar faces. Looks like the audio is pretty good. Sound is good. I can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna we're gonna rock with it for now and we're gonna see how this ends up going but uh hey we got max in the chat how we doing max um you've you've joined us at a on a weird stream because today i'm going to be trying out luna and the way that obs works is i have to use like virtual channels to get audio from ableton into obs and that don't work with luna so i'm having to do some really interesting things to make this work um, I'll show you guys how <laughs> and we'll, we'll we'll see if it see if it sounds good So I I don't use Luna very much. It's kind of like logic a little bit, um, but it's uh, UADs universal audios uh, DAW, right? So recently they put this out for free for anybody who owns one of their devices You guys have probably heard me talking about UAD before um, I am a user of UAD stuff. I very much like it. Um, I understand that, you know, the price point can be a little touchy sometimes, but, um, I do, I do think it's worth the value for sure. So, um, without further ado, if I switch on over to my other window, we should see Luna. There's a chance that my mouse might be, uh, <laughs> hidden. We'll, we'll see if we can get around that. Um, and this should be good. Um, however, underneath Luna, Let's see if we can see it. No, you can't really see it. I've got Ableton open. Um, and in Ableton, let's see if I can do this through OBS. Visual, okay. Bonk, there we go. And uh, it, this is crazy. In Ableton, I have a audio channel here with tw channel 27 and 28 coming in through the input. Um, and this seems to allow me to monitor what's going on in Luna through Ableton, in which case I can then send that signal through my virtual channel back into OBS. So here's an instance where Ableton's audio routing can be really handy here uh, to maybe compensate for some other piece of software that you're using. So I'm going to have to make sure this is all working. I'll pop into Ableton here, switch my monitor to in, which means that anything coming through these inputs is going to be monitored through Ableton here in my settings here. You can see I have my output set to black hole, which is what um, OBS is paying attention to. So now hopefully if I switch back into Luna here, uh oh, wait, not yet. Gotta swap the windows. Okay. Switch back into Luna here. If I start playing a metronome, we should we should be good to go. I think I see this coming through. Alright, I feel pretty good about this. Can we all hear a metronome? I just want to make sure that we got that going. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk no, I'm not gonna risk turning on my my version of the sound. We hear a metronome. All right, I'm gonna risk it. Oh, okay, we can hear the metronome. Sweet. All right, awesome. So now we can really just jump in without further ado. Very cool. So, yeah, for those of you who have never seen this, this is Luna. Um, I don't think it is the most uh, commonly used DAW for sure, especially since it was only released 
you know, a little while ago. Um, I really like it, though. You know, it's it's organized in a, in a kind of familiar way for those of us who have used um, Logic or maybe even Pro Tools. I haven't really. I can hear a Metro game. Yeah, it's, it's the really interesting uh, default metronome sound, right? <laughs> we'll see. see how it goes. Um, and so... Um, we're, we're going to, you know, run into some similar organization on this tool from one of those DAWs. Um, but there are some things that it does differently. I like the way that MIDI works here a little bit better than, than in Logic. It's kind of a little bit more like uh, Ableton, which you might see me use here a little bit. Um, but the audio processing is, I think, where this really kind of shines because this is UAD we're talking about. You know, these guys are known for modeling analog tools and also working with companies that do a good job of modeling analog tools. And so this is geared towards using those, right? Um, you can certainly open other third-party VSTs here in Luna. However, um, we are you know, going to be prime, probably trying to stick to the UAD stuff one because it just works a little bit more smoothly here. You know, they're, it's new. They're still working on compatibility things. Um, however, I want to kind of showcase, you know, what UAD is and, and what, what makes them kind of uh, awesome these days. Luna, the newest DAW under the sun. Yeah, it is. I think it is probably the newest one. Um, I think the one before this that was pretty new that became kind of popular was uh, Studio One. I don't know if we got any Studio One users in the chat. Um, I think Studio One's pretty cool. It's got an interesting history behind it. Uh, Bitwig, also pretty new for sound designers out there. It's very cool. It's very much like Ableton. All right, so let's uh, let's actually jump in. You know, I'm gonna try and immediately. Oops, I hit a button. I'm gonna immediately try and make some make some music. I don't want to talk too much, but you know, I want to definitely describe you know what I'm doing as I do it. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't use this very much. So we're gonna be learning together a little bit. Hopefully, it will be fun. See me kind of flail around in here for a moment. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is the sounds that Luna comes with without using my third party VSTs um, are very kind of um, acoustic leaning for sure. Um, this is kind of a recording DAW. And so I'm going to probably stick with, you know, focusing more on like composition than sound design today. Um, so we'll see, you know, what we can do. Maybe I'll play a little bit about piano. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's jump in and start taking a look at what they got here. So kind of like Logic, um, we have our browser over here on the left, and we have like our, our track viewer here. Um, and there's some uh, drop down menus here. We can see we have input utility, master tape, console inserts, sends, cues, and outputs here. Um, can we see my mouse? Oh no, OBS is hiding my mouse again. Ooh, do I take the time to try and fix that momentarily? All right, hold on. Let me try one one thing here. Let me try one thing here. If I do this, oh, streamer window, streamer window. He's showing the streamer window. I think we're okay here. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna rock with that for a minute. Okay, so over here where I'm hopefully circling with my mouse that you can now see. Ah, oh, yeah, it worked. All right, nice. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, we have a couple of drop down menus here that allow us to access different parts of this channel, um, kind of similar to you know how Ableton would work. So on our input here, we can add um, some um, console emulation here, which they do have some. I don't own these. Um, so you can see demo expired. We're not going to be messing with this. It's a CPU thing anyway. Uh, utility, we have some things that we can, you know, expect to, to, to see like a sidechain option. We can adjust the volumes of things, do some phase inversion, things that you would expect to see. This is kind of like the utility tool in Ableton. Uh, not that much different. And then master tape is where this starts to be a little bit more like, you know, the analog world where you might actually have individual, uh, you know, tapes for your inputs. And so we can actually apply um, one of our, our tape options here, which for some reason I'm not seeing the other one. There should be one more option here. Maybe it'll show up here. Interesting. There used to be more here. What happened to these? We're about to, about to find out together. This is all about learning. Did they take them away? That's so strange. Um, cause they have a few other tape machines in Luna. However, oh, how do I get back? <laughs> okay. Um, but they're not showing up here. They have the Studer A800. They have the oxide tape. Those used to be here. Um, I expect maybe I'll find them momentarily, but they're not here anymore. Alas. Huh. Very interesting. The Neve consoles there. All right. And then we have our inserts. So this is just going to be normal effects, right? So when I click on inserts here, it pulls up a big list of my universal audio stuff. Uh, but it also pulls open a list of all of the other companies who I own plugins from. So you can totally use third party tools here at your own discretion. It's new. So compatibility, you know, may vary, of course, of course. Mouse is, back. Mouse is not afraid of cats. <laughs> You guys are silly. Um, and so, yeah, this is where we can start stacking audio effects. I know it kind of looks like we only have one here, but similar to how Logic works, um, if I were to apply, like, said tape machine that I was expecting to find, 
um, in the other area, uh, it opens up a new panel underneath that allows us to continue stacking audio effects. So bear in mind that the way the universal audio uh, tools work is it's DSP based on the interface, right? And so we're kind of limited to however many um, you know versions of these I can run at once uh, with the interface I'm using. Now, if I do need to, I can boost it by turning on my secondary interface, but we'll see if we get there. You can see along the bottom here, though, I don't know if I have Zoom, uh, that we have a tracker here showing me how much is currently in use, which is actually a little bit, but I'll tell you, I'm using a preamp on my microphone here, which is partly why uh, it's like that. Um, also, my voice looks like it's coming in kind of quiet. Um, I don't hear me, so guys, let me know if, uh, if I need to change anything here. So we're going to, I don't know, we're just going to leave this on this channel. Why not? This is our uh, master output right now, so I guess that's fine. Kind of pretend like we're in an older older situation. And that's why, okay, now I'm starting to understand why I didn't see the familiar uh, tape machines here because this is our master channel. So let's get off of this and add a new track. And this is where this is a little bit different. You know, I'm not going to be like right-clicking in here. I could go up to track and insert something from up here, but our whole section over here that kind of functions like a browser sometimes is going gonna, is gonna to be our tracks. <clears throat> And so if we click this plus button uh, over here, we can insert one of three, you know, bus. So we can do like sends and returns here. Uh, we have an instrument, which is going to be kind of like a, a VST, a MIDI track. And then we have audio, right, for recording anything um, plugged into our interface. So, <coughs> or excuse me, we're going to start with an instrument. And before it actually drops in the track, it asks you kind of what you want to add to it right away. Um, so you can change your type here. You can give it a track number. You can change it from mono to stereo. We can name this thing, so I'm not going to yet. Um, and then this drop-down menu under instrument is the different tools we have access to. So you can see under Universal Audio, they provide us with this tool called Shape, which we're going to probably be using as much as we can because that's that's the the Luna tool, right? The rest of these are part of you know third-party third-party tools that I could run in here as well if we need to you know for a certain sound I'm looking for maybe we'll open one of these but I'm gonna try and stick with uh, the the Luna option here and then we have a console option I don't own the API vision so I'm gonna say none so that it doesn't just immediately turn itself off and then we can click OK and this is gonna shoot a channel into our list here and it's also going to pop up a MIDI track down here now this takes a long time to load it didn't used to so not really sure oh that wasn't as bad as last time it's going to take a hydration break. <clears throat> and so now we can see we have this kind of window that pops up. So this is like other DAWs where when I open a third party tool or one of these apps, it gives me a window I can kind of place around wherever I want. There's not really like a formal area where these go, kind of like in Ableton. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, and now because I've got this tool selected, the window over here becomes a browser, right? So I can still see all my other VSTs here, but if I were to click on the presets option along the top of shapes, it's gonna give me all the different sounds that exist within this device based on you know their category. And so you can see there's quite a bit of categories here. Um, we have, oh my Lord, I think they added some. Uh, acoustic guitars, bass, drums, electric guitars, effects, horns, keys, you can see these. They're very kind of acoustic leaning. We do have some synth stuff here, but um, a lot of acoustic sounds. And this is going to kind of function like contact. So for those of us who have used Native Instruments contact tool or something like it, I guess Omnisphere is kind of similar as well in certain instances, but anything that really like models acoustic sounds, um, this is going to be very similar. Um, however, we don't have necessarily as much control over uh, the individual sounds as we would under that instance or circumstance. However, these sound really great. Um, they do a very good job. They're kind of remind me of the uh, extra stuff you can download on the Ableton account. If you go into your accounts drop down list, there's like strings and acoustic sounds you can download. They don't come with Ableton because they're too big. Um, similarly, you know, the contact sounds. The Logic pre-made acoustic sounds are pretty good. Uh, these kind of remind me of those as well. But, you know, they all have their own nuances as well. So we're going to take a look at that, see what we see what we like the sound of. Looks like we got Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Good to see you. <clears throat> all right. So let's just kind of like browse through some instruments. Once we find one we like, we'll maybe actually start laying down a track and looking uh, at, what, at what MIDI looks like, which is a little crazy in Luna. And, and I think... As I've said before, this tool is a little bit more geared towards recording. Um, and so the MIDI, uh, you know, that, that leaves maybe a little room to be desired. We'll, we'll check it out. So if we click presets, we can start browsing through some of these sounds. Um, we're not going to start with drums because I don't necessarily know what we're going to listen to here. And I'm not necessarily going to pick guitar right away because usually modeled guitar sounds can be a little rough because it's hard to actually play a guitar or at least sequence MIDI in a way that 
is similar to a guitar. So let's look at some of like the keys. Um, looks like we've got some pianos. That's what this sounds like. It's kind of nice. Soft piano here. It's kind of more like a, you know, like a lounge room piano, maybe. House piano, I bet this is going to be pretty bright. There it is. Kind of like a production piano. You know, a couple of varieties here. Um, I really like the soft piano, so let's just toss it down there and assume we're going to use this momentarily and move on. So I like to take this opportunity to organize some things. I can rename this. I, I swear. <laughs> okay, well, not going to do it now. <laughs> Disastrous. Ah, there we go. You double click on it. Soft piano. Cool. Uh, we'll add another track. Uh, I can duplicate this. So I, I do actually like that. Oops. Okay, I'll make it pink as well. <laughs> um, because now I can immediately just pull open our shapes again and, and go in and mess with this. So to get back to our shapes tool, kind of like in Logic, we need to navigate to where it is in these drop down menus. So it's under instrument, find shapes, and then open it up from here. Chow hi from Beijing. Hello, hello. Player on the way out. Tip the piano player on the way out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tips can be sent to my uh, PayPal. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> All right. So let's find another sound we like. So we have a key instrument we're cool with. Um, the horns seem pretty cool. So look at how these are labeled, right? We have live, long, and short. They're different intonations, right? Intonation is really important when it comes to organic acoustic instruments. Um, the player, the person playing the instrument, is more important than the instrument itself because they can add character to it, right? They can make the instrument do things that, you know, maybe it wasn't meant to do or wasn't originally intended to. And that gives it a lot of life and flavor. And so whenever you find these acoustically modeled sounds, you'll you'll catch them adding a lot of different intonation options here for us. So live is probably going to give me maybe a variety here. Ooh, I've got all of my tracks selected currently, so let's not do that. Just one, please. <laughs> this is where this is where we're all figuring this out together because I don't use this very often. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mute it. I still have all the tracks selected. Can we? Can we please unselect all the tracks? There we go. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. It's still doing it. I'm a professional. I promise. I promise I'm a professional. Okay. I'm holding command and it's selecting just one. Now we do not hear the piano anymore. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, so it's very kind of synthy for sure. Um, I'm getting I'm getting some interesting synth vibes. Um, so we do have some controls over these, but let's just keep looking at what these different horn sounds are like. So we have our long horn, very similar, and then short. It's gonna be our staccato horn, right? So this is probably a little bit more geared towards what we're doing. Something like that. Maybe we'll keep that, but we have a couple of options. I'll check the short staccato. Softer, a little bit more orchestral. Also a little soft and orchestral. Got our trumpet solo. Very thin. A little bit, uh, a little bit nice. So we'll grab our, our normal brass low short. That was very nice. I think that's going to layer our piano quite well. Our kind of like nice sort of jazzy piano we've got going here. It's got the the hammer sounds really nice. Luna cost an arm and a leg. However, <laughs> there is the uh, UAD device called the Arrow or the Solo. I can't remember which is the newest one. It's probably called the Solo. I think that's the newest small device. It does not need a wall to be powered, so you get to power it with your laptop, which means you can use it on an airplane, which is sweet. Um, and it still comes with Luna because Luna is free with the devices. I think that Arrow or the the Solo is like. 300 400 bucks right now like it you know it's still not cheap but if we're considering you know that compared to something like one of the larger focus right interfaces it's about the same and the focus right interfaces definitely don't come with all this stuff you know it doesn't open up the the uad suite of plug plugins and tools to use so i still 
I still advocate for them, even though some of their devices are wildly expensive. You know, they're, they're catering to a variety of people. They they were mostly like professional studio focused uh, uh, groups. And then, you know, once they took off a little bit, I think their marketing got a little bit better. Um, they were able to to, you know, function more like a like an at home studio group. Maybe change MIDI channel number and we'll stop all receiving notes. It probably will, um, for sure. I'm going to end up recording the MIDI here. There's, I'm pretty sure, a direct control. Uh, like, for example, if I select one of these to record, I, I probably linked these, to be honest with you. I probably just hit a button. I didn't mean to do this. <laughs> um, and there's definitely some snap stuff going on. So, yeah, it's it's okay. I, I can certainly get around it when we end up recording MIDI here. Um, all right, let's add a new track here. It also might have something to do with me um, duplicating the track. So let's just do a new one here. We'll keep shapes. And we'll find one more instrument before we move on. You've got to get a bass, right? And we've already gone very acoustic here. So let's grab um, something that feels similar. So we have an acoustic bass option. We still have our horns going. I'm so sorry. <laughs> This is nice. It's okay. definitely an upright and it definitely does some bends. So here's an example of uh, smart intonation. UAD solo interfaces, $700. Are they insane? It's because of the chip shortage. They did not used to be that expensive. I think the cheapest UAD interface was around uh, 450, 400 like that. Yeah, no, that is, that is too steep. I understand $700 and I'm not going to lie for $700. I'm no longer recommending that interface. I would just recommend getting the twin or, or the ones that come with more DSP chips. Yeah, that's wild. I think I really think it has something to do with um, the the chip shortage and their just inability to to keep up with the demand. You know, they kind of have to. It's very unfortunate. <clears throat> okay, cool. So now we've got a couple of instruments we like. Um, I wanted to kind of just showcase some of these these nice sounds, and we'll grab a drum kit because I'm going to use that first. We're really going to add something that I can play along to. That's not this metronome. Now I can change the metronome sound, but you know we don't we don't like it. So let's grab ourselves a drum track, and you can see this is where they kind of expand beyond a couple of different genres. You know we've got like an EDM pop kit here, and the sounds, admittedly, oops, of course, of course, not bad. No, very, very high quality, very clean, very well sampled. <clears throat> so that's not what we're going for, though, right? We have our acoustic kit like this, a couple of other ones. You can assume that these live kits um, are probably going to contain a little bit more reverb in them, things like this, right? We've got our vinyl hip hop kit, some resampled drums, which I like. I'm more into that than I am the acoustic kit, so we're going to go with something a little bit textured and styled. Is the chip short of ed shortage ever going to end? Um, well, the chip shortage is not going to end. What's going to happen is technology is probably going to compensate around it, so they're going to come up with crafty ways to not need them or not rely on them nearly as much anymore, um, and especially because of the sort shortage. There are a lot of uh, like tech companies uh, who are working on workarounds for it and coming up with different products that we can use. Um, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little rough. Make a big band track or Dixieland band. I mean, I don't, I love big band music. I'm going to do my best. This is kind of already the, the direction we're going a little bit, especially with those hip hop drums. Uh, yeah. Chip shortage is insane for sure. Isn't it? All right, cool. So here we've got some, some instruments we would like to play in. And once again, I'm recording audio just across the board. Which is a little wild um there there must be a much more easy way to do what i'm doing here um one thing to to note is uh this tool is definitely geared towards you know people who are familiar with this type of like recording setup already like there's a lot of things that are just not you know labeled fully or described like if i hover over something like it's not really going to give me um the information on it right so something to deal with <clears throat> Okay, so let's let's record in a track. I will probably in this instance adjust my MIDI inputs here a little bit. Selected. There we go. So <laughs> I had this on all. I don't know if that's like a default because here here's the other thing is I used to the, the few times I've used Luna in the past is like 
long before a lot of updates that have they've pushed through so there are certainly things that are different about this than the last time uh, it looks like we have a selector here for you know how the the midi goes so i would much prefer selected no it's still giving me it's absolutely still giving me everything oh current is all so how do i how do i change such a thing apply to uh i see i see okay well never mind that has nothing to do with what i was saying i give up <laughs> this is an interesting way to record we could also just uh track with everything running all at the same time no problem right <clears throat> okay got a couple of stereo tracks yeah honestly like this is this is mighty strange anytime i click on something it's forcing me to select everything i do believe that i put these like in a group somehow and i don't yeah all tracks group selection group here we go now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay, so <laughs> apparently the group default has changed here. So um, we can we can work either in a group or out of a group, right? Which is actually a workflow thing for sure. So if we're trying to make sweeping changes, so let's say I have a bunch of vocal harmonies being recorded and they're all in a big stack of tracks here, being able to work with all tracks simultaneously kind of like that could be very, very helpful for sure. Um, especially if I'm doing recording, maybe I have eight inputs coming from an overhead set for drums, right? I'm recording drums professionally. Um, I, I might want to have just mass control over all eight input tracks for those uh, uh, inputs. And so here's another update where it leans a little bit more towards this kind of like recording style of things. However, I, I'm learning. <laughs> we've, we've got this sorted here now. Um, the Volt 2 is a cheap UAD one. Is that a new one? Volt 2? So they're constantly releasing like smaller desk interfaces to try and make it more accessible. Um, I don't I don't know. I've never heard of the Volt 2 um, unless that's just a not UAD and that's just a different company that also handles DSP. Antelope Audio is another one to look into. They're about the same price i believe in in the end as uad but recognize too that um these these devices and these tools you don't you don't get all these processing tools just for owning the device you get some of them it comes with some of them especially when you do it on black friday it comes with more however you still have to pay them extra money to get the other things right so it's 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 still not the end of the uh the end of the purchasing that you'll have to end up doing What's up, Mark? Um, all right, so now that I've finished flailing around looking to figure out how to make MIDI trigger to just one one track, uh, we're gonna record some sounds, right? So now we can actually talk about a little bit of style in, in, in sound design and uh, composition here a little bit. The default uh, beats per minute here at the top is in 120 beats per minute. That's too fast for me unless I'm going half time. Um, I really like the feeling of 83 beats per minute. So for now, I'm gonna set this here and we might totally change this uh, later. Mark says, you know, I got a universal interfa uh, UAD interface. I feel like one of their selling points is that they have a dope plugin. But yeah, exactly. So uh, we've been kind of men mentioning a little bit of this. But geez, boys, those plugins are an additional 1K. Well, I mean, if you get the whole bundle, isn't it more like six? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like six. It might be on sale right now for for like the bundle. If the bundle's on sale right now for 1K, then... <laughs> but I think how they do it is you buy, you know, a certain amount of tools and you get a certain amount of three or you pay a certain amount to pick five because all their plugins have a different cost structure so all right i gotta shut up and start recording some music i'm sorry <laughs> so uh, i've got our click here uh going we can change the sound if we want to um but i'm not going to deal with that now and this is kind of the uh, uh the beats per minute that i was real into We've got, a, we've got a few drum sounds I want to start. And I want to think, you know, arrangement wise, especially because, you know, I'm, it's not necessarily going to be easy for me to go in and make a bunch of changes here. And so I'm going to want to record some things that I can start dotting around our arrangement here. So let's think about what maybe the intro drums are going to be, what the verse drums are going to be, the chorus drums, things like that uh, when I'm recording. So I'm just going to improv for a moment. We'll chop out what we want from what I record here. So I do believe got to arm our track, hit our record button. We should be good to go. Got counted. See, we're good here. Okay, so there we go. We got some stuff definitely going to be cutting this up a little bit um, now some of the quick commands that you're familiar with work here right so if i click here 
and I hit Command E, I can usually, or is it C here? Ooh. Oh, changing the quick commands on me. All right, that's fine. <clears throat> so we can just kind of resize this so that it actually starts at uh, the beginning here. And if I double click on this, you know, we're used to seeing this like pull open a window where uh, we see our MIDI. And this is where I think Luna absolutely like falls short and kind of fails a little bit. This is our MIDI window. I can hit, you know, a button here. Excuse me. E. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and we pull open our like full, uh, <coughs> excuse me, MIDI window. And I have a little scroll bar here if I want to scroll up and down and I can just plot MIDI down right on our arrangement view here, right? So there is no separate clip that stores MIDI. It's just right on the grid and I can change things right away, um, which is a little problematic as you can kind of assume for a multitude of reasons. Like when I'm clicking around in here, I'm moving things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the other thing you might notice is it does have a little bit of <coughs> syncopation going on here, which I want to keep, but we could quantize this if we want to. And that kind of functions the same way, right? So I can highlight all of these notes just by clicking and dragging or hitting control A while I'm inside the clip or command A, depending on what kind of computer you have. And then we can just right click quantize settings. It looks very similar over here on the left to how Ableton's quantize feature works. Um, I'm not going to uh do this here um yeah also michael black says fold it yeah that's kind of from uh ableton as well right i can click fold here and then it only shows me the notes that i used in my recording um which is great but i need to be able to see some of these other um hits because i'm going to be using more drums than just the three i played here uh this is just kind of like our intro right so what i want to do here is get our clip to start, you know, in in time with where where I want this to, so we can just kind of get rid of uh, extra stuff at the beginning here. I can finally get rid of our click because now we have something to replace it, right? <coughs> and this is where we're gonna start. So I do want to highlight this and duplicate it out. So Command D, Command C, Command V, it all works. Okay, excuse me, I'm, I've got a very dry throat. I'd rather you hear me gulp momentarily than coughing up a storm over here. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, now we want to get into some of these other sounds, right? So kind of like how we're used to this working, we get a demonstration of what these sounds are when we play them. I can double click notes in, I can shift these around. There's no grid snap when I'm holding command, just like how Ableton works. And so I can pre-shift things if I want to. Right, I need to zoom in a bit because it's too much. <clears throat> so I like layering our clap in here. We can copy and paste these over top of the other spaces here as well. We've got some other drum sounds that are cool. I like this for kind of like a like a splash at the end. Uh, the quick command for changing the velocity is the same. You just hover over a note, hold a command, click and drag up or down, and our flag down here is going to adjust. I looped on accident. That's just kind of just by clicking and dragging up here will naturally happen. Although what just happened, I really enjoyed. <laughs> so we're going to copy. We're going to, oops, excuse me. We're going to get rid of <clears throat> this set of drums. And we're going to copy the ones from here over top because I enjoyed that uh, kind of like hip hop style re roll repeat. Just getting a little, a little troublesome here. There we go. And then it could repeat. <clears throat> so let's see. I think we get our bigger kick drum going here, but I don't need to layer every single kick drum with our with our big like tambourine messy kick drum thing. Except for when I loop it. <laughs> Maybe we just have it on the downbeats here to to layer our kick drum with, right? And the instances where these don't align, I will probably go through and have the transients for these kick drums lined up. Sometimes the horse trotting effect is not ideal. <clears throat> so you can see how this is kind of similar to Ableton, right? We might record in some some drum parts and then we'll go in and see, you know, what else we've got here to layer some more stuff in. So maybe we'll get, oops, maybe we will get a hi-hat going. Okay, so when you're highlighting space, you need to make sure that you are highlighting specifically the length of time you want to duplicate this over like this. Otherwise, you're not going to 
get it. And also sometimes it cuts you off. I'm not really sure. They're working on it, like I said. <laughs> so we can put our hi-hats on the downbeat. We're almost done here. So certainly some of those impacts were too messy. So we're going to quantize. So I just want to highlight this and that. <laughs> and then we're going to go into our settings because I definitely do not want this strength on 100%. I do not want like perfectly quantized drums here. We all know this. Um, and we also want to consider what rhythms we've got going here. I mean, I'm in a slow tempo, so I know 16th notes is going to be fine for me here. <clears throat> and I want my strength to be like really low. Like we're going to do like 20% and then I might apply this more than once. So you can see I hit it, they shifted, I hit it, they shift. So this is really the problem here. Not 100% sure why, I think we're just a little early on some of these, which makes everything else feel late, even though it's not. You definitely hear that getting weird. Honestly, like <laughs> a little odd. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to lean into the pre-shift and it's going to be fine. It's going to kind of function like a, you know, a hip hop drum loop that we didn't necessarily have quantized perfectly. And we definitely just want to use our ears now to determine the best spot for these instead of worrying about where the lines are. So this drum hits get moved early. All right, cool. Because this turnaround at the end here is always going to end up being fine. We need a category. <clears throat> oh, for the for the uh, outboard gear recommendation. Yeah, you would probably need a category. <clears throat> All right, cool. So there we go. Now we have some actual arrangement, right? We have our intro stuff. We have our verse stuff. This could be like some chorus stuff. You know, I'm just going to copy these around so that we have some variation throughout. And now we can immediately focus on our other instrument. I'll hit E, kind of minimize my MIDI. When I say minimize, I mean just make it smaller. Like we can still change this from here. It's a disaster, but you can do it if you've got, you know, the greatest eyes in the world. <clears throat> um, Mark Morgan, some equalizer master. I did just the compressor, studio compressor. Uh, it also depends on your budget, Mark. It's probably helpful to, to drop a budget number down there because there are some like obvious pickups that are, you know, from some of these legendary companies, but you know, the budget is very important there. Um, I think dangerous audio is pretty affordable for the quality. Um, I also like warms stuff sometimes, like the warm gear is not too bad if you're looking for something that kind of models the Neves without spending an arm and a leg for it. <clears throat> All right. Uh, how much time do I have? Not as much as I want. That's all right. That's all right. We can get through some of these other instruments. So we'll swap over to not our bass, not our horns. We'll do the piano. And kind of similarly, I'm just going to jam out a little bit with the drums until I've got a little bit of a progression that I like, and then we can adapt it. So I could just make a loop here if I wanted to. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, selected everything again. There we go. Turn up the volume of this piano a bit. All right, so C. I'm going to play something I already know so, to save time, but I want to know, are we feeling more like old, like Disney vibes or are we feeling more like Christmas music? You know what? I'm going to make the decision. It's November 18th. I'm going to I'm going to do the more like Christmas vibes. Cool, that sounded pretty good. So now we just want to get this recorded in here. Just need to hit our record button at the top, we're good to go. Uh, I am going to deactivate our loop. Please, yeah, <clears throat> just in case. And I'm totally gonna mess up some of the uh, recordings here. To be honest with you, this is a little fast for what the song is, so we're gonna slow it down and this will help me not mess up the recording. But again, fresh tempo, I might, I might have to go in and fix some of these things in MIDI when we get there. All right, so we look like we're good to record. Let's go. The 
This is not the big band music that I promised. All right, I'm 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 walking back my previous statement. I'm not trying to like put you guys to sleep under the Christmas tree. Sorry, Gospel circus vibes, circus vibes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Mall piano man activated. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Mall piano men probably don't make a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> Um, okay, so with that in mind, we'll do something a little bit more jammy in the in the big band department, which means we're gonna take ourselves back right up to 83 beats per minute. Oh, this is a very touchy slider. What the heck? 83. I think it's still made it a little too slow. It's fine. All right, this is fine. All right, I got an idea. Sorry, <laughs> you gotta you gotta suss it out, especially when you're when you're playing the keys on your own, because the nuances are not necessarily as intentional. Your hands just kind of do stuff while your brain's thinking about the actual progression. <clears throat> so here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to play in a nice soft set of chords and then I'll start adding that piano intonation to it so I can then copy my MIDI into some of these other places. I don't necessarily want to record everything uh, with my piano here, but especially because of how that MIDI grid works, getting these down via recording is going to save me, save me some time. Full of mistakes, kind of like I, kind of like I said, don't erase what I did. Rewind, nice more circus. <laughs> oh man, I'll okay. So <clears throat> let me like back up for a moment and take a pause from what we're doing here. Um, I'm think I've been thinking of like new ideas for what I can do on stream with you guys, and there's a producer Bishu, I think is their name. Forgive me if I messed that up. Uh, they like they have a YouTube series where it's like making genres that don't exist. Um, and I do really like that idea as like a kind of like a stream beat the clock style uh, challenge. So we'll 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 do some stuff like that. I'll make like a circus house song, or like a circus dubstep uh, tune, something like that. Um, all right, cool. So I'm gonna go in very momentarily. We're gonna click on this clip. I'm gonna hit E, which is gonna make it big and make it kind of like E for edit mode. I guess is probably what they're going for there. And I'm gonna play through this. And as I play through this, my eyes will see what my ears hear going wrong so i'll make some quick fixes while we play this back rhythmically we got a bit of a problem here oh man it's tough to see <laughs> not gonna lie oh i zoomed back somehow okay over here there's a problem this note doesn't come in time and i've got some bum notes layered right over top of it so i can give that a little fix and i don't know is that even right should that be there yes it's just very late <laughs> all this stuff is very very late also 
Also, my pedal got got bad, so we can maybe take a look at where we do E for expand. Yeah, E for expand, maybe. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we can maybe take a look at where my pedal automations come in. Um, but for now, we're, we're gonna skip over that. <laughs> my bass note here for sure and we got some like weird bum notes here don't really need that we do need to finish our chord though cool and then that's that's good for me that's enough cleanup in my eyes um, and this is also where our beat kind of restarts so I guess that's enough variation for how I was playing this before we can kind of copy this out under the assumption that we're going to do kind of like a similar return to um, the beginning here cool so now we've got this we can think about adding a bass line now i think to, to i said i wasn't going to do this but i think to keep into the keep in the spirit of um you know how these things sound i'm going to play these in especially for time as well and then we'll kind of take a look at maybe uh the, the the chords and maybe some of the choices i made from a compositional level so let me fix this this is a horn and this is a bass and these are drums okay now it doesn't hurt to look at <clears throat> so we've got our bass selected here it's pretty loud just turn that down a little bit um and i'm like you know i'm gonna try and follow similar con conventions for how a bass is played uh but i'm not a bass player so some of these are just going to be kind of standard layers to what the piano bass is doing uh, don't worry about it. We'll see how it sounds in the end anyway. hit some hit some weird notes there's like a chord turnaround in there that i played basically rally random chord on each time i don't remember what what my progression really was god night show where'd you come from where'd you go oh man so uh, once again we're gonna kind of e for expand e for edit open up our baseline here take a look at what i played and see if there's some changes that need to be made these are all right so far post christmas Missed that one. I mean, I got it, but not in time, Nathan. <laughs> Almost in time. So add our little chromatic climb there. think that's right it is right okay So we've got a little bit of a bass line in here. So again, we can kind of just send this down the line. Um, and now our horns are probably meant to be a little bit more of like a melodic layer. So we'll see what frequency range we'd like these to fit in with kind of the rest of what we've got going on here. Uh, all right, I, I got the low ones, I forgot. I 
to change the uh, instrument here because these don't allow me to play higher on the keyboard. They're kind of true to the uh, instrument themselves. And so I need to go into our settings here and find a horn sound that is not brass low so I can play a little higher. I think these are probably going to give me um, the wider range here, the regular horns. So we'll stick with that. <clears throat> Yeah, the dangerous audio consoles do look sexy, don't they? They're really solid monitor controllers for sure. <clears throat> it's a little softer, kind of fits this style, I guess, a bit. We'll go, we'll go full orchestral at that point and choose the other ones that sound a little better. We got some stuff. We're in the key of C sharp major or F minor, kind of depending on how you want to look at it, I guess. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we can get something kind of simple in there, and then I'll add maybe a bit of a melody in the chorus part where, where there kind of should be one, right? So when you're doing these types of things and you're just kind of experimenting and jamming along with what you're playing, don't be so worried about like recording exactly what you need. You know, you're experimenting, you're trying different sounds together, you're trying different notes, different harmonies. So once you have what you like, you know, we can always go in here, hit E on it <laughs> and uh, go pull out what we like and kind of rearrange, right? So our moment over here. I like the first line. Obviously my landing note here was Poor choice. I want to hit that uh, E flat. And I don't really like going back here either. And this is the, the, the note that the chord is on, so might as well stick there. And I went to the C instead of the E in the song, so we're going to move that back to the E. or not <laughs> oh, I do go to the C my fault so we could also maybe hit like a G too, something that's in the chord but different part so I didn't want to do the same thing and land on the resolving note so I'm holding it off right kind of like a sustain where you're hitting it and then going there, right? And now that I kind of have, you know, what I like, we can just get rid of the stuff I wasn't nearly as into. Uh, be wary of where you're highlighting, because if I copy this and paste this from here, we're gonna be shifted a whole 16th note ahead. So you wanna make sure you're copying these things into the right place, um, and we should be good to go. So I <clears throat> don't want this progression to start here. So we're going to uh, cut this. Now, <laughs> me remembering what that tool is or what that quick command is. So not easy ever. <laughs> I really thought it was command E, but it's not. E is for edit or expand. T for trim. <sighs> It's so loud. It's all right. It's fine. We'll just deal with it a different way. <clears throat> so, oops. Can I consolidate this in this manner? No, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just get rid of what we don't need. Don't want to delete tracks. I don't want to delete though. There we go. All right. So this is where this starts. 
And actually, I guess while I'm here, we might as well keep the... Okay, get the back, please. Thank you. We might as well keep the um, single notes. All right, so here's the situation we're in. I'm gonna play back through all these tracks and I wanna take a look at what some of these tools from UAD we can add to this to make it sound a little bit better. Uh, and then we'll probably call it. This is a nice little dive into it. Simple Sam, I don't know if maybe you weren't seeing the, the menu I was popping up. I was right clicking. Um, there are things like I, there's a cut button. I don't think that's what that means. I think it's like cut and paste. You know what I mean? Copy paste. Um, and there is no quick command <laughs> next to it that shows me uh, what it would be on the keyboard anyway. Um, and here's the thing. Like the reason why I'm like so stuck on my brand and it being command D is I'm pretty sure it was when they put this tool out um, originally, um, just like Ableton is. However, struggling i could probably go to track let's see if we can find this together track nope <laughs> this is funny <clears throat> you know sometimes just some of the simplest things it says command t i don't believe you i just tried that click command t it's not it didn't it didn't do it it's lying to me I mean, it's said, it's said, maybe I, wait, 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 wait. You highlight a section, you highlight a section and then you hit command T. Oh no, that's like a crop button. It is command E. You just have to highlight a section. So I don't, I don't know why that's like that. If I highlight this, I hit command E, it cuts it out. So I'm not really sure why they don't just have like a click option for it. I think that would probably be the move, but that's all right. Whatever. It ends up working. Yeah, so I don't I don't think OBS is showing you my menu when I right click on stuff. I guess it's a little odd. All right, so with what time we have left, I'm going to run through and add some things uh, to each one of these tracks, so we can see <clears throat> under utility here we have you know those options. We have our tape options here. Here are the ones I was expecting to see. Um, so I'll just do oxide for these because I don't really need to change the settings on it. I'll just kind of let that stay uh, fairly. Um, default maybe I'll crank the saturation up to the first option here um, and then for this piano I'm thinking of a couple of things um, certainly like you know compression sounds nice saturation sounds nice you, you know we could add a preamp on there to, to spice it up a bit um, there's a couple of things here um, that could be cool uh, certainly and so I want to I want to play something or I want to use something that's not part of the UAD bundle here. Let's see. You know, like I'm feeling kind of like a nice chorus effect. I know it's a little weird because this is very like live um, sounding, but I think we want to change this to be a little bit affected. So we're gonna use the Studio D chorus effect. I'll give that a pretty heavy amount of chorusing. And we'll just put our, our limiter here. I like my LA too. Very simple. You can hear my bung pedal, it's okay. All right, we'll take a look at these horns now. Get our oxide on there. It's 
So this definitely wants saturation, right? I can use this as an after effect. Wow, this one actually spins. Would you look at that? Um, and to save myself some time, I'm just gonna grab uh, a bit of a preset here that adds a bit of saturation. So we're looking for uh, an EQ as well. And actually, to be fair, I really like the Cambridge EQ. There's so many different choices here, but this is so familiar being um, a parametric EQ that you know I'm, I'm kind of a fan here. So we'll choose a bit of a filter here, cut out some frequencies we don't need. I would rather make this a little brighter. Where's my shelf? Here we go. making me a little brighter. There's nothing wrong with that. And we'll get our compressor. I'm just gonna use the same compressor, which is not what you're supposed to be doing across the board, but it's all right. I do want kind of heavy compression on the horns because it makes them sound a little more synthetic. It's kind of cool. So we got our bass here. Similarly, we're gonna put our tape down. Now for the bass though, I want this to be big and fat. So I'm gonna immediately put a low end resonance boost on this via VOG, which is very strong. upper bass frequencies yeah that eq does look like the sonic stuff for sure although the sonic stuff these days is a little nicer uh interface um cool and then for the bass like we could check out one of the amp models like the b15 amp model sounds quite nice uh, it's a little bit weird potentially to be running an upright through something like this because we are going kind of acoustic but again i want to change this up a bit switch switch between different models 64 66 have their own unique eqs Certainly amped now. A lot less clean, a lot louder, right? Clipping a bit. So I'll fix the balance between these two together. And for your listening pleasure, I will add a maximizer to the output just so that we're not listening to a very quiet version of what we're doing here. <clears throat> Man, Ozone looks dusty in Luna. That's kind of weird. The GUI is different. drums we got similar things i'm gonna add that low end resonance boost now usually i would just bust this to the drums the kick drum specifically but oops, i'm going lazy mode uh, trying to give the kick drum a little bass oomph um now i think running this through some sort of EQ or preamp would be a good option. So we're going to do the Helios. If I've got, I was about to say, if I've got room for it, I sure don't. Uh, that's fine. Um, so we'll just do our LA2, which I should have room for. Wow. Maxing out here. All right. So we will use a third party tool. Cool. 
So now we'll do a little bit of balancing here. We'll do this one by one. Oh. It was letting me select multiple, no longer. So really, I just want to get rid of uh, the effects on the horn. I think that's really what's making it feel separate from the music. And that's where we can go back into shapes. And just like contact, you have like a little bit of control over this. Like I can turn off our delay and our reverb, which is what I'm going to do. But otherwise, we don't have too much we can accomplish there. And in fact, that's not even where the reverb was coming from, which is wildly frustrating. Let's see if we can get in here and change this. There we go. Allows me to make it louder without it getting in the way. All right, cool. So I'm gonna play this back for you guys. This is pretty much where I gotta leave you. Unfortunately, I have other things I gotta do. It's a full-time job, this. Uh, so, <clears throat> as always, you know, I want to remind you we have a, uh, a physical location here. Uh, in the city, if you're interested in taking classes, we have crazy Black Friday sales going on right now. 45% off individual courses, 25% off bundles. I would love to see you in one of our uh, in-person classes. As fun as these um, you know, streams are, you guys get a little bit more hands-on you know, with, the, with the classes. So it'd be great if you're interested. Uh, we also got a $200 Ableton voucher in our giveaway this week. So sign up for that. Check that uh, link in the description or in the, in the chat that uh, Thomas has been posting. Uh, for that um, and otherwise you know me I'm gonna I'm gonna stick around for a little bit while I have our end screen up after I play this song but otherwise I will say goodbye to you here it was uh it was good hanging out I have no idea what the heck happened to my webcam so <laughs> all right I guess I guess this is the this is the time so uh, I'll play this through once and then I will I will see you later <laughs>